You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You on this beautiful day. My name is Paul. Mm, yes, beautiful indeed. Welcome. This is episode 1012. We're glad that you're spending a few minutes with us. We have a question today that uh, seemingly should be simple, but it's not because there's just a lot of variations. I, you know, I don't know that it's accurate to say there's gray area, but there's just some challenges in understanding the realities of what drone pilots can do relative to how high they can fly and where. So anyways, we're going to talk a little bit about that and hopefully clear some things up. Definitely. I think we are going to clear some things up, but also give you some strategies on how to have more access to flying in controlled airspace, because there are definitely some little hacks, like everything in life, that allow you, if you're using your brain, to get more out of the situation. Love it. Yep. So um, on that note, we are going to go ahead and say a very special thank you to our friends at Fortress UAV. Whenever you need to fix your drone, we recommend that you check out Fortress UAV to have it diagnosed. They're honestly a great group. They even sent me an extra Inspire 2 while getting our Inspire 2 fixed. Use promo code DRONEU for 25% off a drone repair diagnostic fee that can be applied if you go to fortressuav.com forward slash drone you. Also, big special thank you to our sponsor, Go Professional Cases. Go to GPC Cases and use discount code DRONEU15 to get some of the best cases to protect your drones for the life of their drones also a special thank you to rob for having the most beautiful bald head i've ever seen and if you want to join us for the membership in the community and you understand that it takes a village to build someone up then you understand why it's so powerful to be a drone you member just go to drone you.education and become a member today to have access to 32 classes to help you transform from a novice pilot to an educated confident and knowledgeable pilot drone you dot education hey guys it's mark hamilton from phoenix arizona i have a question about the 400 foot uh airspace authorization rule it's my understanding that if you get say an authorization to fly 100 feet above ground level that if you're within 400 feet of a structure a hill or a building or whatever that 100 foot authorization also can be used 100 feet above that building if it's within a 400 foot radius however i heard an faa authority the other day in an interview say that if you're in surface class e that and you get a 100 foot authorization that is a 100 foot firm off the ground not 100 foot over any obstacles that may be in the vicinity now does that include hills is that true for only class e E to the surface, or is that uh, true for all uh, airspace authorizations other than flying in class G? I'm not really clear on this. I thought I was, but once uh, I heard that from the FAA authority, it threw me off. Thanks for your time, guys. Great information. Hey, Mark, thank you. You know, um, just uh, hearing you ask the question, which is, is a great question, and um, a question that I think a lot of people have. Actually, a lot of people probably should have it and don't even know that they should have it. Just like you, you thought you understood until you heard that podcast or whatever it was that you were listening to the FAA person on. Um, but just hearing you ask the question just kind of expresses how confusing it can be, <laughs> kind of bouncing around in the question, right? When we first listened to this, one of the things that Paul mentioned was he answered the question himself. So I think maybe you knew more than you didn't or than you thought you did. But anyways, there's a lot to unpack there, actually. Well, there was a couple of things that we had kind of talked about on our walk, um, which is, you know, um, first and foremost is, you know, he talks about the whole structure thing. It's extremely important to clarify something. The FAA says that you can fly to 400 feet or to 400 feet above the tallest point of a building within a 400 foot radius of that building. The key thing that they do not discuss that's very important, but was later discussed in a webinar with the FAA 
was the fact that you cannot breach controlled airspace by essentially if so let's let's say that um hypothetically speaking we're in albuquerque and we are uh we want to fly the um hyatt building which is the tallest building here in new mexico and let's say that at the surface of that building we're in class g but the top of that building is actually in class charlie can we go to 400 feet above that building if it is actually breaching the shelf of class charlie the answer is no the answer is 100 percent no so his particular question, though, was if I get access to fly in 100 feet of airspace, that's 100 feet AGL. So he did answer the question in his question. Mm -hmm. um, it is above ground level. OK, mm -hmm. so that does not mean that it is above structure level. OK, it right. means wherever you take off, it's 100 feet above that. Yeah, and, and the nature of his question is such that he is specifically, even though it wasn't called out specifically, asking about controlled airspace. Yes. It's so the premise behind the question. I know. I, I, I just know you know clarify. that. I'm clarifying for the listeners. I think we're both trying to clarify that we're clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> Are we clear? Okay, Crystal. All right, on that bombshell. Um, so, bombshells. you know, his question is, so if I have access in E2 to go up to 100 feet, then can I go to a hill and take off 100 feet from there, or am I limited to 100 feet? He could take off from a hill. So, like, let's say that, you know, he's here and he wants to take off he can only go up to 100 feet but if he takes off from here now he can go up here so he has and go over to here exactly and, and be 200 feet exactly the, yeah okay because it's 100 feet agl now something very interesting agl from where you take off correct very important point something very interesting here rob um if I'm flying a so Isotope Stadium is inside KABQ's airspace, Class C, Charlie Airspace. Now, I have to go map this particular stadium here soon for another reason, for a new client. If I were to take off in the field, which is about 30 feet below ground level, and I had a 200 foot ceiling, which is what the UASFM allows for there. I would not be able to clear some of the obstacles around the stadium, okay? But if I were to take off at the road and fly to 200 feet there, I could map the whole stadium 25 feet clear of any obstacle and not have a problem, okay? What's your question? Well, my question is ground level, if you're on the field, isn't that the ground? So you bring up a good point. The ground is relative, okay? The ground is either the ground as in the field or it could be the ground as in the road, okay? The road is sits 30 feet higher than the field, right? okay? The drone is measuring AGL from where you took off, right? So if you take off below, you're limiting yourself in what you can fly. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so when you said 30 feet below, you're just suggesting go pick up those extra 30 feet by taking off from the road instead of the field. Instead of the field. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But let's take this a step further. I misunderstood the point, but go ahead. Let's take this a step further. Okay. So let's say that I really need to fly a little bit higher than the 200 foot level uh, because the lights are at 195 and I need to clear them by 30 feet to get it in my map. Okay. Okay. What can I do? Oh, there's a parking garage a block down the street. I could take off from the top of the parking garage. Okay, because you can still see your drone when you're flying, right? So you still have line of sight. You're close enough to be able to do that. That's correct. Okay. That's a good point, though. That's a very good point. Um, it's also extremely important to understand that a lot of these airports also have aeroscope. So you could mm. technically get yourself in trouble on accident and the towers utilizing aeroscope could be looking at what I would call, quote unquote, bad data. Because let's say that you are not thinking about this, you are not taking into account your pre-flight checklist and where you should take off in controlled airspace to have the maximum amount of uh, area to fly, mm -hmm. right? If I take off at the field, right, the field is 30 feet lower than the road. So okay. the road is really our ground level, okay? If I go to 200 feet from the... Uh, Let's say I go to 250 feet, okay, from the field. Okay. I'm really at 220 feet 
in the AGL approximately to the area. But because Aeroscope is showing data from the drone and not relative to the area, it would show that I'm breaking the airspace. So let's say I fly to 220 feet, but the field sits 30 feet below the road, okay? Okay. If I went to 220 feet, I would actually be at 190 feet, but the Aeroscope data would be saying this person is flying illegally, even though technically it would be very easy to argue that, well, I'm still under 200 feet AGL if AGL is the road. <laughs> <laughs> so but my, it's dependent upon where you took off. Exactly. So this is why it's also extremely critical to think about in your pre-flight checklist where you should be taking off, especially when you're flying in controlled airspace. Because if you take off from the field and you go to 220 feet, you know, even if you were to take off from the road and you were to go to 200 feet, the 200 foot would actually be above the 220 because you're taking off below mm -hmm. the other area. So super critical. Ladies and gentlemen, just think about where the hell are you going to take off in that area? Because, yes, if there's a hill, take off from the hill. Because guess what? You're going to have more space to fly. All right? Just, again, Rob brings up a very good point that you should be, again, visual line of sight. Sure. So that's And crucial. so to clarify, outside of the purview of what his question was about, in Class G, the rules obviously are completely different. But as it relates to the 400-foot Max in particular, that's when the structure does become important. In Class G airspace, you can go 400 feet above. Yep. Okay. Yes, 100%. So you can go 400 feet above the structure if as you're long within 400. As you do not breach controlled airspace. Absolutely. Absolutely. So really important because a lot of people think that it's just their, they think it's their, uh, their get out of jail free card to say, oh, well, top of the building and over 400 feet. It's like, yeah, but you still can't breach controlled airspace unless you have an authorization. It's very clearly written out in 107. Absolutely. And you can't forget about the upside down wedding cake that we're talking about that it, it'll it sneak up on you potentially, right? Yes. That control their space if you're not careful. Totally. Totally. Do you think we did a good job of covering this issue? I hope so. I think the comments and uh, the folks will let us know, but um, I think that it's definitely cleared it up relative to uh, his question. So, But if not, let us know. If you need more clarity or if you have a disagreement about what we're saying here, please, we want to hear about it. We do. We do. On that note, it's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for watching. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. And if you're not a member of the DroneU community, I would ask you, have you given up on being the best pilot that you can be? Because lifelong success means that you got to be open to lifelong learning. And if you are, then you are the perfect candidate to become a DroneU member. So check it out. But that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is DroneU.Education. Education.